Sometimes after you edit a photo in Lightroom, things look pretty good, but your sky just looks a little bit underwhelming. It looks something like this. It looks okay, but what if we could just make it look a little bit more dramatic and pop a lot more in the photo? Perhaps make it look like this instead. This process follows three main steps using the gradient filter, a color range mask, and some basic exposure sliders. So let's get started. My name is Brendan from BeWellCreative.com and if you want to make your skies look a lot more dramatic then you're going to love the steps that we're about to break down here. Now the first thing you want to do when enhancing a sky is actually create a gradient filter. Now you might be thinking, okay Brendan, duh, like I know to create a filter like that, but there's one extra thing added to this that makes it a lot more powerful. So I'm going to go and create a gradient filter here, click and drag down like so. And the problem with a regular gradient is that it does affect other parts of your photo. So if I press O on my keyboard, I can view that mask and anywhere that you see as red is going to be adjusted by these settings here. And as you can see, the mountains and such are being adjusted, especially as you drag your gradient further down past your sky. Now, ideally, we like to just have our adjustments take place in the sky so then we can go crazy with it and not have to worry about other parts of our photo. And luckily, you can do that using a color range mask. To access the range mask, once you've created your gradient, go to range mask and set this to color. Since the colors in the sky are often different than the foreground, so it's just really easy to separate the two. Now, with your range mask turned on, we'll click on the eyedropper tool. Now I'm just gonna go and click somewhere on my sky and notice how all of my mask has been refined. That's because now Lightroom is only applying this gradient mask to this one particular sampled color, which in this case is the blues. Now obviously we want more to be included in this, so I'll hold the shift key, notice how I now have a plus icon beside that eyedropper, and I'll click around a few other places in my sky to make sure everything is selected for me. So this looks pretty good to me right here, and notice how none of our mountains are now selected, and that's because we've only sampled colors up in the sky. Now one thing to be aware of before you commit to your changes is see how there are some areas around the edges that look a little bit weird and that's because those are not selected so when we go and do our adjustments those areas will be missed. Luckily we can quickly refine this by adjusting the amount slider. By dragging this up Lightroom will be less and less picky about which colors it is adding into your selection. It's still using these sampled areas but it's going to have a wider tolerance. Now if I go the opposite direction I drag down notice how less and less becomes selected aka less and less of the sky is red and that's because we're reducing the tolerance of our color samples making Lightroom really picky about what exactly is being selected. Now for sky adjustments most of the time I'll be dragging this up just a little bit until all of the sky looks nice and selected. There might be just a little bit along your horizon that ends up getting adjusted too, but it's going to be such a slight adjustment that you won't really notice it in the final edit. So now pressing O to hide that, I'm going to put my eyedropper tool back in there. Let's just reset that exposure adjustment back to zero. So now we've applied our gradient filter, we've added a color range mask, and now we need to go and add our adjustments. This is step three. To make our sky look a lot more dramatic, we want to add contrast and darken the sky. So the first thing we'll do is just drag down down the exposure slider just a little to bring down the overall brightness of our sky. The next thing I'll do is bring down the highlights so that's going to bring back more detail in all the bright areas and then I'll bring up the shadows like so. That's going to soften things up just a little bit. Now you might be thinking, Brendan, but wait, I want more contrast in the photo. Well, don't worry, that's why we have the whites and blacks. I actually go and do the opposite with these sliders. I'll drag up the whites that's gonna make those brighter areas in the sky pop. And then I'll go to the blacks and drag that down to add back in some nice contrast. Now from here, we're gonna to go to our texture slider and I'll drag this up to add some nice texture into the sky. This really helps to make little clouds and the edges of things pop a lot more and makes it look more dramatic. Now the next thing that we can try, this is optional depending on your sky, but you can go to the dehaze slider and drag that up just a little bit. And that's gonna add this sort of unique, epic looking contrast into the sky. Now really Really quickly, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to hit that like button down below as it really makes a huge difference to help other people improve their skies as well. All right, let's get back into it. Now, once all these adjustments are complete, you can refine them as necessary depending on the look that you're going for. 
And then you can also adjust the contrast slider just to bring everything together a little bit more. So now let's go and look at our before and after here, turning that adjustment on and off. Look at that huge difference that we just created to our sky. Our sky was pretty flat and boring, and now it looks epic, powerful, and dramatic just with those three easy steps. Now making your skies pop a lot more in your photo is one of the easiest ways to enhance your edits here in Lightroom. And with this three-step process, you can do it in literally seconds once you get the hang of it. If you wanna know more about range masks and how they work, I made an entire video all about them where I dive deep into the uses of them between all the selective adjustments in Lightroom. You can find that video up in the corner right now. Now if you want to make this process even easier, I actually created a Dramatic Skies preset that you can download for free by signing up to my email list via the link in the description below. Once you sign up to that, you'll get instant access to that preset as well as weekly updates for Lightroom, Photoshop, and photography tips. Anyways guys, if you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to hit that like button down below as it makes a huge difference and I really appreciate appreciate it, as well as hit that subscribe button if you haven't already to stay up to date with more tutorials just like today. Again, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com, and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.